Today we're going to discuss a variety of feeding techniques and assistive strategies. As we all know, some students who have physical disabilities have difficulty eating due to a breakdown in any one of the complex series or processes of eating. To begin, we're going to discuss the definition of feeding. This is a specific skill of when a person gives the student food or liquids, concentrating on the processes of sucking, the swallowing process, chewing or biting, and tongue control. We'll be walking through the different feeding techniques and assistive strategies that facilitate these processes of feeding. As you can see, one needs to set up a proper mealtime environment. Amongst the most important things to do is make the environment comfortable and relaxing. As you can see, we have adequate lighting in this room. The room temperature is right around 68 degrees. There's very little noise or other distractions. Therefore, this might be a very comfortable place for a student to eat versus a normal grade school, middle school, or high school cafeteria where there might be too many distractions, the lighting may be poor, or the room temperature may not be comfortable. The first strategy that we're going to discuss today is that of sucking. There are a variety of strategies for this particular skill for students with low tone in their muscles of the cheeks, jaw, lips, and tongue area. Low tone typically refers to these muscles as being floppy and that the joints may be overly flexible. Therefore, it is imperative to ensure that you stroke the lower lip to promote sucking. This is the first skill that we will learn on. The second skill that we will discuss is closing the lips with a thumb and index finger. This is especially beneficial for students who have the tongue thrust reflex, which is a forceful outward protrusion of the tongue beyond the borders of the lips. Tongue thrusting interferes with eating as it becomes difficult to, inter to insert food or liquid into the mouth. The third instruction that we're going to discuss is that of stroking cheeks in a circular direction by applying firm but not solid pressure. And the last skill that we'll discuss with sucking is that of stroking the lips in a circular motion. This is typically accomplished with a lollipop. The second skill that we will be discussing today is that of swallowing. As we all know, swallowing is a very important uh, aspect of the feeding process and that ensuring proper procedures are followed is vital to the safety and welfare of any student that is going to be fed. The first step that we're going to discuss within this process is a facial massage to increase saliva production. The second step within this process is that of stroking the throat. And the third step that, we'll be, that we will be showing is by using jaw control. This is done and accomplished by supporting the lower jaw by using a hand to guide and support jaw movement. And what is very important during this is to be sitting to the side so that you can witness peristalsis and proper swallowing procedures are being followed. This is to ensure that aspiration and that choking may not occur. The third step within the feeding process is that of biting and chewing. Biting and chewing are very important within the feeding process as they are vital to safe and successful digestion of any, any food. The first step is that before feeding, rub the jaw inside the mouth with finger or by using a lollipop. The second step is that by placing or presenting food on a utensil, place the food on the molars when the mouth is open. As you can see, she is properly supporting the jaw and aiding in biting and chewing. The third ongoing step is to use jaw control. This is accomplished by supporting the lower jaw by using the hand to guide and support jaw movement. These steps are vital and very important to ensure safe and successful biting and chewing of food to aid in digestion. 
fourth step that we will discuss today, and perhaps the most important, is that of tongue control. This is very important as those with low tone often struggle with every step of the feeding process, sucking, swallowing, biting, and chewing. The tongue is important and vital in each of these processes, as in sucking the tongue aids in the actual suc suction mechanism of the mouth. When swallowing, the tongue mo helps move and process food back to the end of the mouth, and in biting and chewing, the tongue is very important and vital in transferring food from left to right, top to the bottom of the mouth. Therefore, we're going to discuss four very important concepts within tongue control. The first concept that we will discuss is practicing forward control. This is done by using a lollipop on the lower lip. The student should naturally search for the lollipop with their tongue due to the sweet nature of the lollipop. The second step within this is practice the tongue back. This is done by applying pressure to the middle portion of the tongue with the lollipop. This is done until the lips tightly close around it. And then the third step within this is practicing side to side. Again, this can be accomplished by using a lollipop or food on the back molars or between teeth. Again, do this until the tongue finds the food due to the sweet, salty, or sour nature of the food. And as we discussed and demonstrated in the third step of bite the biting and chewing phase, it is important to use jaw control. Again, this is accomplished by supporting the lower jaw by using a hand to guide and support jaw movement. The last topic that we're going to discuss today is the importance of proper feeding techniques. Feeding techniques are important for a variety of reasons. Chief amongst these is it enhances a more natural nutritional intake. Students with physical disabilities often lack without proper attention and care, the same nutritional intake that people without physical disabilities get. The second reason is that it improves the function of chewing, swallowing, and respiration. These three aspects are very important in the proper feeding and digestion of any uh, food intake. The third topic is it does prevent choking and aspiration. Uh, aspiration is getting food into the lungs and can cause severe complications such as pneumonia, which in some cases can be fatal. And if it's not fatal, it will, will increase your chances of developing pneumonia at a later time. Next, uh, it helps control abnormal muscle movements with the assistance of an adult by helping replicate these muscle movements. Safer and better procedures for eating food are, are followed. And last but certainly not least, it improves the child's quality of life through safe and successful feeding measures. Again, it is our duty as responsible professionals to replicate as many of these 